Okay, so we're going to continue uh, looking at that. And so uh, we're going to go through the teens uh, this morning with that. So let's pray and then we'll get into that. And Father, again, I pray and ask for your blessing, your guidance, Lord, and your help. Lord, as we discuss the subject of numerology, Lord, from your word, we ask that we would all, Lord, be blessed by these things, and we pray and we ask for it in Christ's name. Amen. Now, as I've been studying this here myself, one of the things that I've found is, uh, you know, if I look up to see what others have said, and uh, they tend to all be very much the same, uh, but the criteria that they're using to come up with their connection to it just doesn't match the scriptures that you find. I try to look for first mention in Old Testament and New Testament uh, and then look at scriptures, you know, where it's repeating these things and I'm fine. It's like last week we talked about the number five. You know, and everybody, oh, the number five in, in the Word of God is, is about God's grace. I can't find anything in dealing with the number five that has anything to do with God's grace. Now, as far as death, oh yeah, <laughs> you know, all through there. So, you know, some of these things, I'll be honest, are a little difficult uh, getting in things, but we're going to start with the number 11, so Genesis 32. And of course, in some of these, obviously, when we're getting up here, you could, you could be looking at things as combinations of numbers. I don't know that that's necessarily uh, going to be the case in determining the meaning. But if we look at Genesis 32, and we want to look first at verse 22, it says, And he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two woman servants and his eleven sons, and passed over the four Jabok. Now this is the first mention of the number 11 in the Bible. And so we have, here is Jacob uh, as he's returning uh, into uh, the land that God told him not to leave. Uh, and he's worried about his, his brother uh, coming to exact his revenge. And it mentions here his 11 Son. So if we go to Genesis 37, 9. Genesis 37, 9. Uh, and this is Joseph. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obscience to me. So this is a reference to, uh, again, eleven of the tribes of Israel, and we know that there are 12 with that. Uh, if we go to Acts, we'll go to the New Testament, Acts 126. And again, here we have the first mention. So Acts chapter 1, verse 26. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the 11 apostles. And then chapter 2 and verse 14. But Peter, standing up with the 11, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my word. So again, in reference to 11, uh, as opposed to the 12. And that's important there. Uh, we'll see that when we come to the next number is 12. But the texts here, for example, the first one is Jacob's 11 sons. Benjamin hasn't been born yet. There's going to be 12. Uh, you know, and Joseph uh, here is in his dream is separated from the 11. And of course, Joseph all through the Bible an incredible type of the Lord Jesus Christ and his brethren 
being against him. Uh, we have the 11 apostles here, which, you know, all the original apostles that Christ chose out except for the one who's a devil, Judas Iscariot, who hung himself. <laughs> all right, then. So the 11 here represents an incomplete whole. Okay, 12, we're going to see here, you know, the whole, the 12 apostles, the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 months of the, of the year, the 12 hours of the day, 12 hours of the night, okay? So you take one away, it, you have that whole minus one. It's incomplete. So it's incompleteness. Now that doesn't jive with what the, uh, the learned Bible scholars will tell you. <laughs> Uh, but again, the criteria that I have found looking at a lot of their stuff doesn't jive with what the scriptures are saying. Now, again, the number 12. Let's go back and look at a lot of references here. Genesis 17, 20. Genesis 17, 20. Here is our first mention. Uh, and as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Uh, Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. <coughs> so he's going to, just the same way as Jacob is going to have twelve sons and going to become a great nation, the nation of Israel. Uh, here we have Ishmael, uh, Abraham's son through Hagar, is going to become a great nation with twelve sons. Genesis twenty-five sixteen. Twenty-five, sixteen. These are the sons of Ishmael, and these are their names by their towns and by their castles. Twelve princes according to their nations. Genesis thirty-five, twenty-two. And it came to pass when Israel dwelt in the land that Reuben went and lay by Bela his father's concubine, and Israel heard it. Now the sons of Jacob were twelve. Going to the New Testament, Matthew 10, 1. Matthew chapter 10, very first verse. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. All right, now if we look in the terms here where we've had the 12 sons are a great nation, and of course they've had a multitude after them, these uh, first, if you will, sons of Christ, the founders, uh, are going to of a great family, and we are that family. Mark 3.14. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him and that he would send them forth to preach. Last book of the Bible, Revelation 7. Revelation 7, we'll start at verse 5, go down to verse 8. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Nathalem were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon, Simon or Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Ishakar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulun were sealed 12,000. And of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. These are the 144 virgin male prophets that are sealed of God from the tribes to uh, preach the gospel of the kingdom through the tribulation period. Uh, if we stay in Revelation, go to chapter 12 and verse 1. 
12.1 And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Again, this is the nation of Israel. Uh, chapter 21, 12 through 16. And here he's speaking of the New Jerusalem and had a wall great and high and had twelve gates. And at the gate twelve angels and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. <laughs> on the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations. And in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof, and the city lieth four square. And the length is as large as the breadth, and he measured the city with a reed twelve thousand furlongs. And the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. Okay, so again here we're we're seeing you know the number twelve. <coughs> being used here. Uh, again, uh, you know, uh, 12 Jewish tribes, 12 Jewish apostles, 12 gates named after the Jewish tribes, 12 foundations named for the 12 Jewish apostles. 12 is the number for the nation of Israel. Number 13, rebellion, Satan, is what number 13 is, Genesis 3, 13. The Lord said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent, but God me, and I did eat. Stay in Genesis, go to 17, 25. And Ishmael, his son, was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. Of course, Ishmael is not the son of promise here. He's the type of the Antichrist. Rebellion. Uh, I go back to chapter 14, verse 4. I'm going to give him that one first. 14.4 In 12 years they served Shadolamor in the 13th year they rebelled. Uh, and 11 is lacking and incomplete. 12 is perfect and whole. 13, the number of Satan and rebellion also represents the workings of the unholy trinity. So you've got, you know, the perfect whole in 12, but you add one into it, and now the same as 11 minus one is lacking. You've got 13 is an imperfect here. Uh, and it is a representation of rebellion, of Satan, and of the unholy trinity. Number 14, Genesis 31, 41. Fourteen, maybe it's two times seven. Uh, Exodus, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Genesis 31, 41. Thus have I been 20 years in thy house. Okay, this is Jacob speaking to Laban. I served thee 14 years for thy two daughters, six years for thy cattle, and thou hast changed my wages 10 times. Uh, now if you go to Exodus 12.6, Exodus 12.6, and ye shall keep it up, speaking of the Passover lamb, until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it 
in the evening, Matthew 117. Matthew chapter 1, verse 17. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations, and from David unto the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations, and from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. 14 represents deliverance and salvation. Being freed. salvation. Number 15. Number 15 and we will go to Exodus 16.1 Exodus 16 first verse and they took their journey from Elam and all the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of sin which is between Elam and Sanai, on the 15th day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. Leviticus 23.6. Leviticus 23, verse 6. And on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. Numbers 28, 17. And on the fifteenth day of this month is the feast. Seven days shall unleavened bread be eaten. Restoration and healing. Restoration and healing. The 14th day, and you have the Passover lamb. The 15th day, and the day of the unleavened bread. Okay. Restoration and healing. Number 16. 16 is a tough one. <laughs> I have to admit, it is a tough one. All right. Genesis 46, 18. Again, not taking what others have said, but what God has shown me. Genesis 46, 18. First mention here is these are the sons of Zilpah whom Laban gave to Leah his daughter, and these she bare unto Jacob, even sixteen souls. So these are the sons from Zilpah and his sons. So sixteen there. Uh, Exodus twenty six twenty five. Exodus 26, 25. And they shall be eight boards and their sockets of silver. Sixteen sockets, two sockets under one board and two sockets under another board. Now a lot of people say uh, that the number 16 represents the love of God. Well, I could not find any verse in the Bible that somehow represented the love of God out of the number 16. I don't have any idea where they get that coming from. Okay, what I can tell you is you've got two numbers. Okay, 16 is 2 times 8. Okay, 2 is, as you remember, separation, division. Number 8, okay, is a new beginning. All right, so 16, okay, we're going to get 8 boards here from the acacia tree. Uh, with two silver sockets, two feet, to hold it up. Okay, I, what I get from this is a new beginning that causes a separation or a division. For example, okay, uh, you have new beginning, 
all right, with uh, after Noah's flood, okay, but you end up with a division, Shem, Ham, Japheth, and you know that going on there. Uh, the 18, you know, or excuse me, the 16 that we're looking at here uh, is. <coughs> To me, that, that's the only thing that makes sense to me. is New beginnings that cause a separation or a division. You know, Israel uh, becomes separated away from the rest of the nations. Uh, the body of Christ is separated away from the world uh, you know, new beginnings that separate things number 17 another one a little difficult Genesis 7 11 7 come 11 number 17 is shooting crafts <laughs> Genesis 7, verse 11. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, again, first mentioned here, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. Okay, so on that 17th day, the flood comes. Genesis 37, 1 and 2. Genesis 37, 1 and 2. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with uh, the sons of Billah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. I've got 8 4 in Genesis here. Let me turn back there. It doesn't make sense, but I've got, if I try to go by order, but let me look at that verse. Genesis 8 4. Yeah. Yeah, and the ark rested in the 17th day, or excuse me, in the seventh month, on the 17th day of the month upon the mountain of Ararat. So again, it's referencing back uh, to the flood here. And then lastly, Jeremiah 32 9. Prophet Jeremiah. 32.9 And I bought the field of Hanmiel, my uncle's son that was in Anathoth, and weighed him the money, even the 17 shekels of silver. The flood starts on the 17th day, okay, and it rests on the 17th day. The ark Okay, you have the Noah's flood, great judgment on the earth. Joseph is sold into slavery <clears throat> at 17 years of age. Jeremiah buys a piece of land, okay, just before going into the Babylonian captivity. He buys a piece of land for 17 shekels of silver, okay, and makes sure that it's documented uh, that in you know, God said, I'll, I'm going to bring you back after 70 years. So he buys the land, believing God that he'll come after 70 years, he'll be able to come back and get that land, or his uh, progeny will be able to have that land. Uh, the number 17 represents hope in a tragedy or a judgment. Okay, on the 17th day that the flood stuck, okay, they, they believed God. They got into the ark. God shut the door. They didn't know how long they were going to be in there. They didn't know what was going to happen. They, had, they just trusted God and believed God. Okay, you've got a tragedy. You've got a judgment going on, but they have hope. Okay, same thing. You, you see the ark resting on Mount Ararat on the 17th day. The flood is receding. 
Uh, and again, with Jeremiah, uh, okay, the weeping prophet, okay, they're going into captivity, into Babylon for 70 years, okay, but God says, I'm going to bring you back. And he trusts and believes God. He buys a piece of land and, you know, uh, has the uh, document sealed and set aside so that when he comes back, you know, uh, he has that. It's hope in tragedy or hope in judgment. Number 18. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Number 18 is going to uh, be about captivity and bondage. Judges, chapter 3. Judges 3.14. So the children of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, 18 years. Stay in Judges, chapter 10, verse 8. Judges 10, 8. And that year they vexed and oppressed the children of Israel. 18 years, all the children of Israel that were on the other side of Jordan in the land of the Amorites which is in Galilee. 2 Kings 24 8. Second Kings 24 verse 8. Jehoiachin was 18 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem for three months. And his mother's name was Nahushta, the daughter of Elna, or excuse me, El Nathan of Jerusalem. Okay? And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father had done. At that time, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against Jerusalem and besieged it. Uh, Jeremiah, the weeping prophet again, 32.1. Jeremiah 32 1 the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the tenth year of Zedekiah king of Judah which was the 18th year of Nebuchadnezzar and then Gospel of Luke chapter 13 13 not a nice number <laughs> 13, look first at verse 4. Christ speaking, Or those 18 upon whom the tower of Siloam fell and slew them, thinking that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem. Skip down to verse 11. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. Verse 16. And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? Captivity and bondage. Number 18. Captivity and bondage. Number 19. 2 Kings 25. 2 Kings 25, verses 8 and 9. In the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, which is the nineteenth year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, a servant of the king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem. And he burnt the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem, and every great man's house, burnt he with fire. Jeremiah 52. Back to Jerry. Jeremiah 52, verse 12 and 13. Now in the fifth month, in the tenth day of the month, which was the nineteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, which served the king of Babylon into Jerusalem, 
And he burnt the house of the Lord and the king's house and all the houses of Jerusalem and all the houses of the great men burned he with fire. And both of these verses, uh, we are seeing the last invasion of Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon into Jerusalem and taking the last of the people of Judah into captivity. And in this, they utterly destroyed the city of Jerusalem, including the temple of God, the footstool of God. Okay. 19 represents complete destruction and judgment and abandonment by God. If you were to take 13 and add the number 6 to it. Okay. 19 complete destruction and judgment and abandonment by God. Alright, and we're going to stop there with that for this morning. If I, uh, I look to see what others have had to say 